here to give you a demonstration of our new GIS website. To access the site, you go to the county homepage at burknc.org, and if you access the I want to menu, you'll find options to get to it at either search property information or view mapping data. Either of those links will take you to the same place. So we'll get the view mapping data, and this brings you to the county website. The address for the county website, if you want to get to it, GIS website, if you want to get to it directly, is gis.burknc.org. Uh, so you'll notice there's a disclaimer, and then there's contact information for the GIS department, phone number and email. So if you have any questions or comments, uh, we'd like to hear them, so please let us know. Uh, to start the site, click the Accept button and get into the main interface. On the left-hand side, you'll see the different search options that are available. You can search by owner name, you can search by what's called an REID or real estate ID. Uh, that's what we're now calling, formally used to call our record number. Uh, so that goes there. Uh, PIN number and address search. You can also enter in a deed booking page if you have that. Across the top, you've got controls for panning and zooming the map, uh, identifying parcels, selecting parcels, uh, accessing a Google Street View, uh, measuring, getting XY coordinates, drawing on the map, creating a new selection, and then finally printing. And then there's also a toggle to switch between the map view and to turn on the aerial photos. And we actually have four different sets of aerial photos available to you. So just choose the one you want to, want to see. Uh, so to demonstrate, we'll start by zooming in. First, we'll do a search uh, in Burke County as a demonstration. You notice that it um, autofills matching names, which is really helpful if you're not sure exactly how the name is spelled. Put in a partial name, and then you can choose it from the list. So if I choose Burke County. And it's going to search and you'll get some results. So here it found 132 parcels that are owned by the county. It highlights them on the map. And you can scroll through this list and find one. Let's see here. Find one. You can click the details link and that will show you the parcel details, the mailing address value, acreage, the book and page, and then of course you'll see the map of the property uh, highlighted. Here's where you can turn on the aerial photography to see the picture of the building and switch between the different years. So forth. Um, the next option you'll see is there's a link for what we call the property record card. And this format has changed a little bit from the old site um, it now goes to a website off the new tax system, uh, which we call the public web access. But when you click that link, you'll pull up the property record for the record you had selected, and you'll see the first, there's a series of tabs across the top. And that is a different section of information about it. So the first tab you're on is the parcel tab, and that's the general summary information about the parcel. Uh, you'll see the different townships and jurisdictions it's in, uh, you'll see deed information, uh, sale information, information of buildings, and then last column shows uh, appraised values and tax values. Uh, there's a tab for buildings, gives you detailed information about the buildings, the outbuildings that are on the property, details about the land, uh, deed history, notes or comments that have been entered in by tax staff about the property. Sales information relates to comparable sales to the property. And the last tab is photos, which currently isn't populated, but we're working on that, so that may be available to you coming soon. I will close this window and go back to the map view. A new feature we've added is the ability to pull up the deed from the Register Deeds site directly just by clicking a link. So whenever you've got a deed booking page, it's available. You see this view deed link, click on it, and it'll launch a query to the register deed site and pull up that document for you. So it saves you a few steps of not having to pull the deed site up and then enter those booking page numbers and get that. You can still go back, once you've looked at, at the document, you can still go back to the deed homepage 
and do other searches directly from there as well. Below that there are four buttons. Um, the first one lets you zoom back to the parcel. So say you're on the parcel and you've, you can use the mouse wheel to zoom in or out, pan around the map. If you want to get back to the parcel you've got selected, hit that zoom to button. You jump you right back to where you are. The buffer option again lets you select parcels that are within a certain distance of the property. And the joiners button right next to it will only select the parcels that actually physically touch the parcel. So if you want to produce a mailing list to uh, certain people within a certain distance of the property, probably want to use the buffer tool. I'll show you how that works real quick. So buffer distance, let's choose feet or miles. Uh, you know, typical distance might be, say, 500 feet from the property. Hit the execute command there. It'll do a search. Close this window. And you can see it's highlighted all the parcels in pink. And then, you see, we've got 80 records found and a listing of them. Now, to get access to this data, what you want to do is then download this to an Excel file. So you run that. Click the open link when you get that in the browser. And here you'll have a listing. It's got the owner name, mailing address, physical address, value information, the same data that's on the screen. It's available to you there so you can generate a mailing list if you need or something like that. So we'll hear that select and zoom back in. Let me show you some of the other searches. So uh, if you know the record number or what we call the REID or read number now tax system, uh, you can enter that number in. So we'll put in a different number here, 37922. Again, you'll see it auto-completes there. You can hit enter to search. Once again here, pulls up the ownership information, highlights the parcel. Uh, you can also go up here, you'll notice there's the the details tab and then the results list. And so this is kind of, let's go back, if you had multiple records selected from a search, you can get back to that there. And then parcel details is down at the bottom. But you can also turn on and off different layers in the map. So I'll hop over there for a minute. So the first tab lets you turn on some of the annotation. The annotation is the dimensions that are around the edges of the parcel, lot numbers, things like that. So if that's cluttering up your view, you can turn that layer off. Um, the address points are on there. You can turn those layers off. Um, turn the streets and street labels off. So you're going to turn on the property ID number labels. Click that box and turn those on on all the parcels. Hope you identify that. You can even go as far as turn the parcel lines off if you don't need to see them. Notice it still will show the selection outline for the parcel you were looking at. You can turn off flood zones on. Now this parcel is not in a flood zone. Let me zoom out a little bit and we'll see where that is. So we'll zoom over here close to the river. And so there you can see the flood zone information overlaid. Wow. Turn it off. You also see we have the ETJ and city limit layers turned on. So you can display those. That'll help you identify what jurisdiction you're in. And you can also turn on contour lines. So not at this scale. If you see a layer that's grayed out like that, that means it's, it's got a scale factor and you have to be zoomed in a little tighter before it will become available to you. So you can check that on. Turn the photos off and you can see there's the contour line layer. And below that, you'll see there are some larger uh, other overlay maps that we've got on there. Right now, all the overlays are turned off, but you can simply check the radio button next to the layer to turn it on. So if you want to see zoning. So right now, we've got it showing we have the county zoning. We also have Morganton zoning and Boundy zoning and Common Spring zoning on the website. We're working to get the other municipalities zoning layers available too. 
So look, that'll be coming soon. Uh, voting districts, so you can see um, what the precinct outlines are and the, the blue flags on the map show the polling places. We have school districts, so elementary school districts, middle school districts, high school districts. Uh, we also have the fire districts highlighted on here. Townships, show watershed areas, and we also have a soil layer as well. Very detailed, so you have to zoom in a little better to see more details on that. A couple other search options you've got, you can enter a PIN number. So if you've got the PIN number for a parcel you're interested in, just punch that in. You can also search by address. So if we punch in an address, so we can find that. Actually, in this case, we found two. We found 110 North Green Street in Morganson, and 110 Green Street in Conley Springs. So pick which one you want. Put the Zoom to button to jump to it. You can also put in other variations. So if you start typing in Green Street, you'll see that it starts filling in possible matches. Uh, so even if you're not sure if you know the street name but you don't know the address, go ahead and start you know, filling in partial addresses to see what you have. All right, to show you some of the other tools that are available, up on the toolbar, you'll see there's the identify tools. Uh, it's the little eye and a magnifying glass. That allows you to click on the map, and that will let you select the parcel. So you see again, it shows the ownership information for you. Um, the next tool lets you select parcels interactively. And this one actually lets you do it three different ways, by clicking a point, drawing a line, or a polygon. So if you need to select more than one property, you can do that. If you're just looking for one, just hit the point button, click on the parcel, and it will pull up that information. And you can, the more you click, you can add to your selected set. You click too many, I think you click the clear selected to start over with that. Um, same way with the line feature, if you start Draw a line through the parcels you're looking for and you double click at the end. It'll go and select all those records. Polygon works the same way. Click a polygon around what you want, double click at the end, and I'll draw it. Another nice feature we've got now is um, actually being able to see a Google Street Map. So uh, when you click the Google Street View button, Click on one of the streets and it will pull up the street view map and allows you to pan the image. So hopefully that will help you in, in locating property. Again, that's only available where the Google Street View images are available, so not all parts of the county will have this. The next toolbar are the measurement tools and there are two different options here. There's one for measuring area one for measuring just distance, and an ability to specify the units you want the results in. So typically you want feed, if you want to measure distance, click a point, click a point, draw that, click, and get your distance along the line. Same thing with the area, measure in acres. Click to finish, and you get your approximate acres for the uh, polygon that you draw. Uh, the next option is the XY coordinates, and this allows you to identify the X and Y latitude and longitude values of any point you click on the map. So we've got several options to display the longitude, latitude, and decimal degrees. 
degrees, minutes, seconds, or map coordinates, which are in a unit of feet that we use here at the county. So just simply click a point on the map and you'll see the coordinate display there. You switch the units, it'll update to the three different options we have. And as you click around the map, those coordinates will update. You can uh, have it just, you can tell the map to zoom to a coordinate point. And this is actually possible for you to say, if you've been out in the field and you've captured a coordinate on your GPS, you can type in the coordinate value here and actually have the map zoom to it for you. Um, and then just dismiss that tool to go away. Uh, next button, the little pencil tool, is the draw toolbar. And this allows you to kind of annotate on the map. Uh, it's got options for adding text, adding points, lines, and polygons. So if you wanted to draw an area on there to highlight some feature, you can specify the color and the width of the line. Once you've done that, you see the map says click to start drawing. And you can draw on the map, double click when you're done. You can go change the color, draw another line. Oop, there it goes. And these, all these drawings will be available when you print on it. You can use the text tool to enter some text. Hello, change the color to something you want to see. We'll put it on in purple. That. So this will allow you to uh, make some notes on the map, put those results out, clear, clear everything off. Uh, the last option there, the uh, trash can, clear selected features again. If you've selected a property, it lets you clear it. And then finally, we've got the print map button. For that, I'm going to pull up parcel again here so we get the data. That's one. Click the print map button, and you'll see it gives you some options here. Um, it gives you the PIN number of the report. You can choose to get the map and the data, or just the map information. You can choose the layout you want, either a landscape or portrait. Uh, allows you to enter a custom map title, and choose the format that you want. It's default to PDF, but you can change that to other graphic formats if you want to embed it in. Uh, in a Word document or something else you're writing. Uh, then you've got the options to print the entire map extent, which basically will print what you see in your window, or to specify a map scale. So Once you've done that, just hit the Execute button. And it'll work. It'll generate a new window here and create the map template, and you'll see there's the uh, ownership information, scale, all like that displayed on there. Uh, again, there's links up here at the top to go back to the county webpage, the home, home page. Um, the site is actually uh, configured and works on a mobile browser. So you can use this on your uh, smartphone or tablet. And then there is also a link to a help page, which gives similar information to what I've given you here, what the different tools do, how to do searches, things like that. So try that if you're having trouble. And uh, hopefully that will answer your question. But if you have any issues, please call us. All right. Thank you very much.